Well, I'm on a bit of a roll, so <laughs> let's do one more. Why not? Do one more today. Maybe I'll do some more <clears throat> another day. Um, but what I want to talk about for this last one for today is why I think memory is both incredibly important and super irrelevant. And I think this is a pretty interesting topic in general, just memory itself. Uh, so a lot of what makes up who you are or the behaviors you have as a person is based on your memory. These memories are built by engrams that you call the things called engrams that you collect over your life. So you touch a hot stove, you learn that stoves are hot, don't touch them, get a little more abstract, you have a bad relationship, you express yourself vulnerably and something bad happens, you close up, you become jaded, this kind of thing. Now, uh, so memories exist and, and they formulate the basis for your ego, essentially, your, your egoic expression of yourself. Uh, but here's the thing, is that memories are flawed and they are editable. Uh, so most of the memories that you acquire through your life are acquired through an emotional lens. You only acquire bits and pieces. You acquire whatever bits and pieces seemed emotionally relevant to you at the time. They degrade over time. They uh, take on different meanings. They lose their fidelity. They become almost completely non-factual in some cases. Um, and they are editable. Uh, so not only is there in psychology, there's regression therapy where you can kind of go back into your subconscious or uh, conscious memories and recontextualize them and kind of change the actual brain pathways so that you edit them into either viewing them from a different angle kind of reflexively or you edit them, the content of them themselves, you realize that was mistaken, that was wrong, it didn't really happen like that, and you kind of change the memory or, and alter it. Uh, but there's also, you know, I, I'm trying to stay away from mystical mumbo jumbo in general, mumbo jumbo, uh, but you know, if you do, you know, uh, kind of yogic meditation practices, if you believe in these chakras, which I think there is, you know, there's certainly a lot of anecdotal evidence that these things have some merit to them to think about. Uh, but if you believe in, there's a, I think it's the 10th chakra back here is sort of a, somewhat tied to your memory. And if you meditate, seating your consciousness in that 10th chakra, you can kind of exercise your memory. You can revisit your memories and increase their fidelity and gain more awareness of them and just it's like gym for, for that part of your brain. And um, if you do that, just like regression therapy, you can edit or recontextualize your memories. You can also view them in higher fidelity and this kind of thing. Um, so in that sense, uh, your memories are both incredibly important because they create who you are and how you act, but they're also very irrelevant because they're usually very emotionally and non-factually based and they're cherry picking and they're selective. Uh, but then there's another aspect to this as well, which, you know, to kind of build on the videos I've been creating today. If you believe in multidimensionality and if you believe in this sort of idea that uh, there are sort of different timelines and if you you know, have a 50% chance to make a decision in this universe, you know, you made it here, but maybe you made the other decision in another universe and you accrued completely different set of memories. You might evolve into a completely different person. And so even if you don't believe that, let's just use it as a thought exercise. So in that case, two, both you, both the same you, but has collected different memories, completely different memories, which one is the real you? That's the question you would ask yourself, right? So the you is not your ego. It's not the collection of memory engrams that you're accruing over your life. It's whatever algorithm is in your consciousness that is selecting those memory engrams. It's whatever's deciding what's important and what's not and how it's reacting to those things. So it's in that, in that sense, it's actually very similar to AI, but it, it's, it's, it's an algorithmic response. You are not a, a collection of memories. Those things sort of color you one way or another, and they change your behaviors, but you yourself must be a sort of algorithmic response. Um, and then 
if you if you don't believe in this multi-dimensionality idea, uh, the thing is just using it as a, a way to get to that algorithmic response idea. If you can edit your memories and you can just change them to whatever you want, then then who are you, right? So there's sort of this idea that um, you want to unlock your full potential and you want to you know be you. Everyone wants to be themselves, but memory is a tremendous barrier to entry for that because who are you really? And to get to the bottom of that, you have to kind of think in this way of, you know, what would I do in these situations that never actually happened to me? Because those are you as well. And you have to do that theoretically without the context of the memories that you've accrued over time. And that version of you is just as valid as the version of you that actually exists. And to that degree, <laughs> I'll just leave you with this. This is sort of unrelated, but it's, it's just an interesting idea. Um, what is the difference between actual things that happen to you and just things you imagined? Because the things that you remember are already false. And so if you just create false memories for yourself, how is that any different? They're both false, right? So just an interesting thought. All right, that's it for today. Cheers.